children. Um, Greece, through its monastery and churches, did the same thing. And so it was common throughout the Middle East, the Eastern world. To maintain a degree of study. I don't know, I'm gonna have to retake this now. We're coming to a stop here because this is coming off. I don't want to lose the camera. Okay, yeah. The whole thing's coming off. Ugh. I'm gonna have to reseat the camera when I get to the to my place and sort of sort of fix that up. It's coming off. But anyways, uh, this is where it is, and this is how these talks go. Our discussions. Uh, these bumps are such that it knocks everything off the scooter. You have uh, I've done several repairs like this, where I've had a sort of proceed gingerly because the bumps were such that it just totally knocked everything off out of alignment. So I've got to sort of fix, find a way to fix that up as well. I do have another way of mounting the camera, but uh, we'll see how that ends up, ha you know, how it ends up working out uh, uh, in a bit. Anyway, so what happens is the, the if you look at the Masoretic texts and you know the feast Hanukkah, Hanukkah is not in the Masoretic text. It's in another text called the Septuagint. And so what happens is that if, because the, the, the Jews themselves don't rec recognize the Septuagint, uh, they fundamentally within their own text don't have the feast, their feast of Hanukkah. They don't have the holiday Hanukkah in their feast. And if you look at what it is in the uh, in the sort of the Septuagint, and it's in Greek, not Hebrew. And this is why a large chunk of your uh, schools of ancient language focus so heavily on Greek, and because uh, it's the only way to, give, to get back to the ancient languages of Aramaic and Syriac, which were which were and are Semitic languages. day of September and we're beginning the second half of our conversation on the way home and this time we're gonna get into Hegel how lawyers work. This is how the legal system works. One side battles it out against the other and uh, and this is the, the survivors of the battle win.
in this case it's the court case, it's, it's not a physical battle, but rather it's a court case, it's done within the court system. And so the court system takes on the Hegelian dialectic, not in a physical sense, as in many progressives, they believe in physical violence, actual violence, and the synthesis of the battle, of the physical battle, between the two, is what progress is. This is why in many cases, both sides of the thesis, uh, of the thesis and antithesis, both sides, will use anarchists as their initial tools. So, the use of anarchy is not something new, it's something old, and they serve both sides. Now, the other side of the equation is are the bankers. And if you've ever heard the term hedge fund, you'll now begin to understand why. The hedge fund is a banking tool in which the financier, rather than choosing sides in a particular battle, will fund both sides. They'll fund and fund and arm both sides of the equation. So it doesn't matter who wins or loses the battle, the financier always wins. Because they're standing outside the battle, and they're allowing the battle over, and they're funding both sides. The United States did this tactic of funding both sides, using the Hegelian dialectic. It's what Israel's been doing with, with Iran and Iraq, which is the Sunni and Shia. The Sunni and Shia these are two groups of Islam. They're fundamentally opposed to each other. They've been battling each other, battling each other since the 18, since the 800s, 800 AD. They've been fighting it out, and um, it's in Israel's interest to keep the battle going. So the uh, basically these uh, Islamic groups will leave them alone. They can do whatever they want to do because well, this group is fighting it out. The Sunni and the Shia. This is their, this is the Iran Iraq war. And with you go back to Oliver North and the Contras, and you'll find out that, that you know Israel and the United States were funding both sides of the war. They, they were providing missiles, weapons, the whole thing, and they were using the drug trade to do it. I mean, this is how they found the large chunk of the drug trade was indeed CIA, and, uh, Mossad, and all these other secret, you know, these secret agent groups, because <laughs> they were using the money, the drug money, to fund uh, uh, their clandestine warfare. And of course, this became very convenient, because now, okay, you have the, uh, uh, the secret wars going on, funding the uh, drug trade. And so the, 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 the thought comes out, okay, we've got a perfect, again, Hegelian dialectic here, and the chance to create more government. And that was the birth of the DEA, the Drug Enforcement Agency. And of course, they were given tons of weapons and stuff like that, and had large budgets, and became a very massive agency. And then once again, you see the Hegelian dialectic there. But this time, the Hegelian dialectic, the bankers, the, the government, stood on both sides of the aisle. They weren't on one side of the, one side of the equation. And this is sort of the same thing when 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 when, when Lionel Brown talks about there's no difference between the Democrat and the Republican. This is what he's talking about. Even though he doesn't come out and actually explain it, he says, this, this is what he's talking about, this is the Hegelian dialectic. And there are people who understand that they're, again, the bankers are, are RNT Gnostics who sit above this and they play both sides. The same thing with the government. The government are, are Gnostics. Take a look at how Washington, D.C. is. And you'll see it right there. So it's right in front of you. It is. It, it, they, they don't necessarily hide everything. It is what happens is that they have enough people who, who will act as detractors, who will sort of provide the cover of their own free will. In other words, they cover the act of the Nazis. Because 
they believe these monsters don't want to make the exist. They want to talk about this conspiracy theory. There you go, again. Tin foil hat and other conspiracy theories. And it's tossed off. They don't understand the dynamic beneath it. And so what happens is they talk about what's going on in Afghanistan. They say, oh, what's going on in Afghanistan? going on in, uh, in uh, Bosnia and so on and so forth. It was a smokescreen. There are other purposes, other reasons for it. And then now, in, you know, we're going to say that the smokescreen wasn't real. No, the smokescreen was real. And it was used to detract. It was, a, it was a distraction from the real interests. And again, the Hegelian dialectic was used to create a conflict by creating both sides of the equation, both sides of the uh, conflict. You armed and funded both sides. So once again, the, the, the outcome of the battle was progress. And I think as most of your political players understand this, most of the people in politics typically understand this. Of course, the ones who are puppets don't. And they simply play their part uh, for whatever interest that they have. And it's typically a self interest. <laughs> and this is the way a, lot, a large chunk of the stuff works. Everything is about self interest, it's about what you get out of it. And so, the lolly is so-called the the the, uh, the altruistic, the, the the sort of the quintessential, the pure, unselfish sort of presentation that they often make it out to be. It's nothing more than virtual symbol or what's probably called a pretense, and it's fake. They always win because they have money on they have money on both sides. And so what happens is there are people who will make money no matter which way the situation goes. This is the same the same thing is true in the stock market. You say the buy, sell, buy, sell. Well, there are hedge funds who don't make money on the buy and the sell. They make money off of the uh, off of the uh, the, the called the volatility in the market. Because they're playing both sides. They're actually working on a hedge. This is what how a hedge fund works. So their interest is to create volatility. And uh, Bloomberg, uh, Warren Buffett, uh, George Soros, these are all hedge fund. These people are all hedge fund people. Their money is made on, on conflict. Their money is made on uh, chaos. This, this, is where, this is where they make the money. You know, the market is going to collapse, it's going to rise again. They're making their money. The government, like... Obama or, or, or Biden, they're going to raise your taxes, kill the economy. Guess what? Why are they saying, oh yeah, the billionaires have to pay their fair share? Because their money has already been moved off the floor, is protected, and they're not going to end up paying. They're not going to pay a dime. How is Warren Buffett's secretary paying more in taxes than he is? Because he's only declaring a dollar a year as a salary and losing everything else off an expense fund, either towards toward the foundation like the Bill Gates, Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, or or some other foundation that is tax exempt. This this is this is the reality of the situation. But you see how the Gnosis, the Gnostics, particularly the Hegelian dialectic 
figures into all of these different factors. Everything we talked about, there's the Hegelian dialectic. So when you talk about Hegel or, or when you talk about any form of conflict, it's there. And then and this is where um, Edward Bernays comes into the equation because he's the one who created the, the, the coined the phrase uh, creating consent, manufacturing consent, consent, engineering consent. 